34 inches mermaid Ariel. Oh, I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them stunting. Up where they walk, up where they run, where they stand in the sun. Wish I could be. Part of that Ow. A chow sickening. Oh my legs. Jesus Christ, why did I get down here? I went to the gym for the first time in a very long time and did leg press because it's my favorite machine. Um, and I might have overdid it because it is my favorite machine. <laughs> anyway, hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is a Pinscale Biscuit? And happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, it's generally when I do a thing called Bad, I'm out of breath, <laughs> called Bad Movies in a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But this week, I'm not putting on any makeup because I don't feel like it. And two, there's no point of doing that because today we're doing a tier list because it's long overdue. We're doing my second Bat Movies in a Beat tier list, baby. I did one of these like a year and a half, two years ago. I think I was wearing this shirt. <laughs> Probably has the same stain on it. And yeah, I'm super excited. We have 60 movies to discuss. We have different tiers. You know what a tier list is. We've been doing this for years, people on the internet. So today, instead of doing makeup, I have my lunch, late lunch, early dinner. I don't know, we'll see. A, a local sushi place had a deal on some specialty rolls. I don't even know what it is. It's pretty good. And I'm gonna eat this because I have absolutely no groceries in my refrigerator and my HelloFresh doesn't come until tomorrow. <laughs> Speaking of which. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kenny and today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit delivery service that offers you fresh, delicious, and healthy meals delivered straight to the comfort of your own home. Pre-portioned, pre-picked out, pre-planned ingredients with easy to follow recipe cards that allow you to get a meal on the table in about 30 minutes, sometimes less than that. If you're like me and you don't read, you skim, you can get that bad boy on the table in like 20, maybe even 15 if you're real reckless and you're not quite sure or care whether the chicken is all the way cooked. <laughs> That's a joke. I actually cook the chicken all the way through. Okay. HelloFresh just makes me a better cook. It always gives me something new and interesting to try out. Um, one of my uh, current favorite recipes of theirs, especially now that we're on the tail end of winter, it's still very cold here in Michigan. The lemon uh, couscous chicken dill soup. I've also discovered my new favorite pasta because of HelloFresh, kava toppy. You can find meals that are great for you to get out of recipe rusts. You can also find ones that are within whatever type of dietary restriction you're trying to do. Um, vegetarian, pescatarian, watching your calories, watching your carbs, whatever. I don't care, I just want it to taste good. It just takes the stress out of getting a delicious meal in your face, especially on the weekdays when you don't feel like thinking about it that much. So if you would like to check out HelloFresh, go to hellofresh.com and use code Kenny60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Y'all want some? It's a big ass sushi. I do bust. So as you would expect, in a tier list, we have to have tiers, right? I have organized into two, four, six different levels. The highest, your S tier, is iconic. That means the movie is iconic. This is the tier for movies that are so amazing, but bad, <laughs> awful, but iconic. Movies that I would return to because they're so bad and iconic. The next tier is good, but made me mad. These are movies that for all intents and purposes, I would call good movies, but are in some way controversial. So it pisses me off. And I still want to call it a bad movie by proxy of that, but it's not bad. Under that is not even that bad. So movies that were called bad, but aren't bad, but good for content. I feel like most of these movies will fall into this category or the following, which is boring or forgettable. And then last but not least is what the f was that? This is like the, the complete opposite of iconic. It's bad, but it's 
bad in a way that I would never want to like subject someone to that. It's only for the people that truly, truly hate themselves. Um, so of course I've seen it, but for everyone else, I would please venture far, far away. Now, like I said, I've done a part one to this and these are all movies that I've featured here on the bad movies in a beat playlist. Um, so if you're new to my channel, you're probably like, how'd you pick these bad movies? They're much worse ones. I know, bitch. These are movies I've already done videos on. So if you would like to check out any of the videos for these movies, you can check those out on my channel. Uh, the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. If you'd like to check out the first 50 or so movies in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist that we did a tier list for, that'll also be linked down below. But this one should consist of about 60 movies. We moving on up. So let's get into it. Okay, the first movie I see here is Tall Girl 2. Tall Girl 2, of course, being the sequel to Tall Girl 1, which was the first movie I ever did in my Bad Movies in a Beat playlist or series. Um, so in a weird way, the Tall Girl series has a special place in my heart. With that said, this movie is incredibly boring and forgettable. <laughs> it didn't have that je ne sais quoi that the first one did. Like it had nothing to do with her being tall, which is why I thought it was kind of odd that they were doing a second movie about it anyway, but it was just like, oh, okay, we needed another one, sure. Next up is He Played Me, which in a similar way is also the first movie I think I did for Tubi. And it was a f mess. <laughs> Definitely in that like bad but good for content category because it was a mess. Next up we have Tangled, which is the passion flicks movie, not to be confused with the Disney movie, uh, about a man who's in love and we have to live inside his mind. So it's a horror movie. I'm going back and forth between bad but good for content and boring and forgettable. I'm gonna say bad but good for content because I think I remember really liking that video I made, but I can't remember off the top of my head. After Ever Happy. I don't even know which after movie this is. I think it's the, this is the fourth one, right? If it's the most recent one, that one was f hilarious and, I, I, and I'm putting it at iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing my ass off. Horrible, badass movie, just a mess. <laughs> oh my God. After If You're Not Familiar is that long drawn out movie based off of the book that was a fan fiction of Harry Styles. They should have stopped making movies so long ago, but I'm actually happy that they didn't because somehow they make them worse. It's very inconsistent. Usually I like a movie that gets subsequently worse, but it's like, it'll be, it's, it's going in this order of like, first movie was bad and boring. The second one was chaotic and a mess, but memeable and I loved it. Third one, also boring and forgettable. And then the fourth one went back up to that like iconic. Speaking of which, now that I'm talking about it, we can do the After We Fell, which I believe is the third movie, which was incredibly boring and forgettable. I don't remember anything from that film. I'm sure they were arguing. <laughs> that, that, that tends to be what they do, arguing and in dirty pool water. Andover, oh God. Uh, Andover was the movie about a guy who was trying to clone his dead wife and he kept, making mistakes over and over because she needs life experience to be his wife. Um, and it was just him doing it over and over and over again. It was very weird. I, I, it was, I don't, I kind of want to put it at what the f is that, but I also don't think it's interesting enough for that though. But it was very much the like, huh? <laughs> Catwoman, iconic. I'm not gonna explain myself on that. And if you don't like it, that's you because you're wrong. Okay, dog face. If you ask me what dog face was about, I honestly can't tell you. I'll just send you a link to my video because that's all I can really give you. It's a, like a psychological thriller that almost was a movie, but it just failed to, to have all the quintessential parts that make it a movie. GBF, I'll give it, the movie itself isn't funny. The only funny parts is when the girl from But I'm a Cheerleader was in. Those are funny. I don't have Behind a Cheerleader on this list, by the way, because it's a good movie. Like it's unironically really good. And it didn't make me mad, it was just good. So neither is The Menu. I've done videos on good movies to me as well. So that's not on here. Geely is, uh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how it's famous for being bad. And you know, I hear about movies that are famous for being bad and I'm like, isn't it really bad? <laughs> earned that title. And if you've never seen Geely, I highly recommend it because it is, it's an experience like no other. Um, it, my video is also one of my favorites that I've made in recent memory. So it's definitely going to iconic cause that's what it is. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I just did a video on this, boring and forgettable. Watch that video. It was interesting because it was so boring that I um, had nothing to say, <laughs> which very rarely am I that stumped by film. And it was a video I did with another movie and I, 
had nothing to say. Like, I <laughs> Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey is a horror remake of Winnie the Pooh. I just made a video on it. It was boring and forgettable. Such a shame with like such a base that has, but um, really lost the opportunity. I was very upset about it. Karen, oh baby. Oh baby. Oh, Karen's a mess. But boy, do I love that video. I actually really like the video. <laughs> like sometimes no matter how bad a movie is, if it gave me so much comedy off of it, in my heart, it'll always be better than it actually <laughs> And this is one of those movies. It is the worst. Oh my god. It's a uh, it's literally like a horror thriller based off of the concept of Karen's and white woman racism. It's so self aggrandizing and it's not very aware of itself at all. And it's ugh, it's a mess. Mean Girls 2. Ugh. Truly a film that should have never been born. It was like a straight to streaming or straight to DVD. I don't remember but sequel to Mean Girls the 2004 classic and it is awful. <laughs> it's really bad um, and should have never existed and we don't believe it exists in this household. Mommy dearest. Uh, ooh. Um, okay. All right. I made like an hour long video explaining why Mommy dearest had turned into whatever the f*** is in the annals of history, I guess. Um, and I'm going to explain what the movie is if you've never heard of it. The film adaptation of Joan Crawford's adopted daughter's life and she's basically telling about how Joan Crawford was abusive and they took that turned it into a movie and it was so bad <laughs> that it somehow it somehow warped this very serious conversation into this like camp comedy it's really fucked up honestly it's really fucked up um but also incredibly iconic and I don't know how to feel about it but it's iconic to me Falling for Christmas. Uh, that's the uh, Lindsay Lohan new Christmas movie that came out this past Christmas. Uh, I don't remember much about it, but it made a really funny video. And for that, I think it deserves its little place. And also I like seeing Lindsay Lohan back. I want more of her. Detroit Dreams, incredibly forgettable. I don't remember shit about it other than them keep spelling Detroit wrong. <laughs> it's a Tubi movie. There you go. Where's the money? I feel like saying what the f was that would make it sound more interesting than it actually was. So I almost don't want to put it there. It was incredibly boring and forgettable. Honestly, in a weird way, boring and forgettable is worse <laughs> than being rememberable, memorable. But where's the money is the movie with way too many people that you recognize in it. Uh, with King Bot, Cat Graham, uh, Method Man, Mike Epps, uh, who else is in it? Uh, Terry Crews, a bunch of people. And it's a completely forgettable comedy movie piece of shit that should have never existed and I wish it didn't, but um, yeah, that's, it can go. Uh, speaking of Cat Graham, Love in the Villa. I'm gonna make this our first not even that bad. And let me tell you why. Love in the Villa is like a very Lifetime-esque feel good love movie. Is it great? No. Is it good? No, but I think if you knew what you were going into, you should like, you should like it. I mean, it's like a cute little story about two people who accidentally go into the same villa and then they have to live together and then they're like rivals to friends, friends to lovers, and then there's a triangle, a square, it's it's a lot. Um, But it's cute, it's very tropey. Old baby, old is iconic. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Shyamalan. I saw your new movie. A lot of people like it. I don't know why. I unironically love uh, M. Night Shyamalan, but he has very few instances in which he goes in between being very good and very bad. Old is definitely his, his trek in the other direction, bad. Uh, it's, it's uh, oh God, it's so good. It's, it's this incredibly, oh my God. I just had a flashback to when I saw it for the first two times, both in theaters. I was sitting there just Tackling, losing my mind. Uh, it's the story of people who go to this island and come to find out they can't get off the island and uh, they age incredibly quickly on the island and it's their attempt at trying to get out. Uh, it's a mess. I loved it. Uh, the skin I live in. Oh, Lord. Um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, this movie could definitely be good, but made me mad or what the f was that? I'm gonna say good, but made me mad simply because I do like the movie, but the movie 
uh, depending on how you look at it, can be incredibly problematic. I made two videos on it, one like detailing what happens in the movie and then another one kind of having a long discussion about gender. I don't want to spoil it if you don't, but uh, there's a lot about gender and sexual violence and, and I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. Uh, there's just a lot going on. It's a lot. And, um, it's a good movie, but there's stuff in it that could certainly be an ill taste. I'll say it like that. And I guess depending on what, uh, direction you're coming from is how you reach a conclusion one way or another about the movie. Okay. Next up is Good Morning, MGK movie where he obviously blackmail everyone to participate. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you got some, another movie where it's like, how did you get all these people in here? And just like, where's the money? It'll go right there. It had MGK, Avril Lavigne did a pop, y'all see Avril Lavigne and Tyga dating? Weird. Uh, that's like throwing two people's name in a hat and whoever gets together have to figure it out. But yeah, Snoop Dogg's in it, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> But it's incredibly boring. It's literally a movie where a guy loses his mind because he doesn't know how to spell. Immortal Instruments, City of Bones, baby. That's a content gold mine. That movie was funny. Oh God, uh, a mess. Loved my video that I made off of it. I'm in love with a church girl and go to church and read her Bible. <laughs> Uh, it's that movie with, uh, j I just made a video on this one, Ja Rule and Adrian Bailon, uh, and they're in a Christian love movie. Lamageddon. I'm gonna put Lamageddon in what the f was that? Lamageddon is the movie of like space llamas coming to earth and killing people. I feel like that deserves at least, but admittedly a lot of the movie is kind of forgettable except for the ending credits where they did a llama rap. And I remember somebody took a song that I made and put the Lamageddon rap over it. I'm not gonna look for that clip cause it makes mad, but it was perfectly timed and I was so upset. <laughs> llama like it like that when you hit it from the back. Stimulate my llama set. Hey, llama tell you, your pussy got me going insane. Llama hit it from the front, llama hit it from the back. <laughs> um, This is A50 Shades. I don't know which one it is. Any of them are forgettable, I'm sure. Um, so <laughs> it's one of them. The Princess Switch, uh, another Christmas movie I did this past year. It was when uh, Vanessa Hudgens played two people. One was a British princess and the other a broke American girl and they switch places because the British girl wants to feel like a normal woman and they fall in love with each other's uh, friends. So like one was engaged, so the other one falls in love with the guy she was engaged with. And then the other one had a best friend who was fun as fuck. Ah, ooh. But she didn't see him like that. But the, tw but the twin did. Twin saw him the way I saw him. Cute little video, cute little movie. Next up is my side piece hit the lotto. Honestly, I don't remember shit for this movie. I don't remember the lottery being particularly important. All I remember is Mama D is in it and some dude named Poke Bear. Gabriel's Inferno, part whatever. I don't even know which part this is. Honestly, all of them are forgettable except the first one because the first one pissed me off. So which one is the first one? Oh, this shit made me mad. <laughs> is it iconic enough to be, it's not campy enough to be iconic. I'm gonna put this in bad, but good for content. That shit made me mad. I've gotten up to Gabriel's Rapture part one, which is the fourth movie in the Gabriel's Inferno movies. So all of those will go in the boring. Okay, Barbarian, some, pe some people are gonna be like, why did you even put this on here? You said you didn't put good movies on here. That movie is weird. It's going to good, but made me mad. It's a good movie. It just pissed me off, but it is kind of what the fucky as well. It, similar to Love in the Villa, the one that's uh, a love story. It's two people get caught in the same uh, Airbnb on accident. I'm not gonna ruin it for you if you haven't seen the movie, but basically they come to find out that the the accidental double booking is the least of their issues in that f***ing house. Titty monster in the basement. Dirty sexy saint. Baby, I don't remember shit from this movie. I know it's a passion flicks one, one ear and not the other, I don't. Unmarried wife, good but made me mad. It's I don't know if it's a great movie, but it's good. The Unmarried Wife is a Filipino movie about, girl, all of them kind of have the same premise, but this one is about a married woman whose husband cheats on her twice and she ends up with a new guy who ends up being a stalker who's also married. And then at some point she's just like, maybe I should call off dating. That's <laughs> Maybe I should take some time to myself. And I'm like, girl, yes you should. Oh, I made like a video on it a few weeks ago and it was almost an hour long cause I was just ranting. Uh, so check out that video if you want to. I had a lot to say. It really, it really invokes something deep and primally angry within me. Tina and Lori, I don't remember shit. I do remember uh, the maker emailing me and wanting me to do this movie. I don't remember shit about it though. Bound 
Is it bad or good for content? It's kind of iconic. It's bad. It's really bad. Is it bad enough to be? It might be bad enough to be iconic. It's like one of those Fifty Shades of Grey movies. Or if Fifty Shades of Grey is good for content, but wait a second. Okay, I put Fifty Shades of Grey in boring and forgettable, but it is good for content though. So I feel like, okay, let's put both of them in bad, but good for content. I think that's appropriate. At some point, Gabriel's Inferno doesn't even feel like it's good for content anymore. <laughs> like it's just making me mad, honestly. Oh, well, maybe part two. Part, part two. part two of Gabriel's Inferno wasn't bad for content. The other two were, I was just losing my mind. Purple Hearts, oh God. Or is it a what the f is that? Cause it did drive me to anger in a way that few movies have in recent memory. It's the one about the Republican and the Democrat falling in love when they enter a fake marriage so that she can get his health insurance because she's dying of type one diabetes. And they somehow can put aside their political differences to find a commonality in their, put in it in what the f was that? <laughs> Because what, what is that? The hell? <laughs> Acrimony. Acrimony ain't even that bad. People was acting like that shit was the worst movie I ever seen. I've seen much worse from Tyler Perry. I feel like if you start watching Tyler Perry and think of it as like a telenovela, you would much more enjoy it. Think of it as like just a catharsis, you know? Cocaine bear. Eh, not even that bad. Cocaine bear ain't that bad. It's the story of a bear that ate a bunch of cocaine. I did it in a dual video quite recently. Wasn't that last week's video? Cocaine bear and uh, blood and honey because they were both bear related murderer movies. Uh, this one is about a uh, bear that ate a bunch of cocaine and went on a murderous rampage. If you want to see it, it's in theaters right now, actually. But boy is iconic. <laughs> but boy is a masterpiece. If you haven't seen but boy, I highly recommend you do. Butt Boy is the story of a man, an average Joe. After getting his first prostate exam, he realizes that he now has a compulsion where he likes to stick things up his ass, particularly small objects, small animals. <laughs> he even kidnaps a child or two. Story of a detective trying to figure out how he's kidnapping people with his asshole. And slowly but surely, the more things that he absorbs, he becomes stronger and gains like almost a Moroku wind tunnel. <laughs> esque effect in his ass. The entire movie, probably the thing that makes it as funny as it is, is that it's played completely straight <laughs> as if it's a real movie and it's a masterpiece, truly. Check it out at your uh, own discernment, you know, for your discretion, but it's a masterpiece. 365 days this day. Which one is that? Is that the second one? Cause they all have these stupid ass names. That one was very good for content. I remember it being funny as f almost iconic. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Where do I, oh, I don't know. Where do I put, I'm gonna put you bad, but good for content because I remember really liking the video. <laughs> <laughs> that one. I, since we're talking about that, I think uh, the next video was also pretty funny. I remember being drunk for the third one, right? Wasn't I drunk for the third one? I vaguely remember my eyeliner smudging and me drinking wine. So those were good videos. <laughs> highly recommend those videos in particular. Any of the ones that are about weird sex movies, I highly recommend my videos on them. Oh, next up is Malignant, iconic bitch, a masterpiece. Um, A lot of people didn't like it. <laughs> I thought it was, Fantastic. I think a lot of people thought they were going into a different movie when they walked in and that's why. Um, it's the horror store. It's very campy, very like weirdly dated movie, but that's the point. Malignant is the story of a woman who has her um, malignant conjoined twin that's inside of her skull that takes over her body when she sleeps and kills people backwards in the middle of the night. It's a wacky ass film and I love it. It's a mess. <laughs> On the complete opposite side of the spectrum, what the f was Dragon Ball Evolution? It's this weird movie that's supposed to be, I don't think it's even vaguely based off of Dragon Ball Z with a 35 year old white uh, Goku. And it's just very weird. I don't know why anyone thought that was something we needed, but they did it. Fat Man. Eh. Honestly, Fat Man's pretty boring and forgettable, even though like the premise itself sounds pretty interesting. The movie itself is kind of whatever. Um, I don't even like the video I really made that much about it, but it was the movie about uh, Mel Gibson as a like Santa who lives in like Alaska or something and a hit gets put out on him because he gave this small rich child a chunk of coal. Little kid sold it though, he killed it, but uh, the rest of the movie just fell quite flat. He Played Me too. definitely bad, but good for content, made me mad. It's the sequel to He Played Me One, if you didn't know. Dear Evan Hansen, Jesus. I could see myself very easily putting it on bad, but good for content, but it wasn't worth 
that viewing experience and go it's going into what the f was that <laughs> i don't know what that was he's all that don't even remember shit about it um i know it's a sequel a remake of sort a sequel to she's all that that's all i remember oh and that one chick from tiktok is in it don't know her so christmas with a prince i don't remember shit about that movie i want to say it's boring and forgettable but i do remember the video being very very funny <laughs> so that's why it's there Wicked, oh, bad but good for content. I almost want to put it at iconic because it's the first supernatural romance on Passion Flix. But all I remember more so than the movie itself is that my video was very funny. So it goes to bad but good for content. Uh, Same for the sequel, Torn. No, I'm gonna put this one to boring and forgettable because I don't remember shit that happens in that second movie. And I don't even remember if my second video on it was particularly funny. I just remember watching it being like, oh, this was a waste of my time. Ebony Hustle. Oh, this one, uh, the Tubi movie about the stripper detective yeah bad but good for content amazon cinderella i don't remember it being good but i also don't remember it being as bad as people were saying that it was eh i'll put it in forgettable it could also go to like bad but good for content because i remember the video being kind of funny all i remember is camilla cantaloupe screaming no other woman Ooh, 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 this could, ooh, this, okay, this is gonna go here, but let me tell you why. This is no other woman. This is a movie similar to The Unmarried Wife, only because they're two Filipino uh, cheating movies and they both made me so furious and I had a lot to say. This movie is not good though. <laughs> This movie is like parts of the movie is so poorly dubbed and acted that it's just cartoonish. It has the same feel. It's a worse movie, but it makes you equally as mad. So it's up to you. Do you want an actually good movie, but makes you mad? Or do you want a bad movie that also makes you mad? <laughs> Beyonce obsessed, baby. Going bad, but good for content. I love Beyonce. I'm gonna see you at concert. I love you, boo boo. And it's okay. We're not all good at everything, you know. We all have things in our career where we're like, that wasn't my best work and that's okay. Obsessed is like a Fatal Attraction-esque movie with Beyonce and Idris Elba and Idris Elba gets hit on by a white woman at work uh, and she becomes obsessed with him. And uh, it's the way that you would expect a Fatal Attraction type movie to go. What Lies Below? I'll just, I'll just, I would just watch my video on it. I don't even wanna, <laughs> I don't even wanna go into that. The Fanatic. Leaf. I don't really know where to put this. Fanatic is a movie about a f fan who is reading as autistic, who becomes obsessed with his favorite something, actor or something. It's this weird, it's a weird and horribly made movie with a horrible moral and horrible narrative and it's just really offensive and shitty it's going to what the f was that kissing booth three i don't remember shit from that movie <laughs> not a damn thing no, all of those movies are such a blur but i do remember my video having like some jumping off points though i had interesting things to say about things that came up i guess in regards to things that were brought up in the movie but that's about it i don't remember shit from the movie nutcracker 3d bitch I couldn't tell you what that movie is about if I tried. Oh my God. It's the most awful. It's very Cats-like. If you've seen Cats, especially if you've seen it in theaters, I don't even know how to explain that movie, but if you wanna watch something that makes you itch and it's supposed to be for children, it's supposed to be like a, a nice Christmas movie and it's horrifying and it was not on purpose. They did not mean to do that. And last but not least, Neil Breen, Twisted Pair. I feel like anything that Neil Breen does, there is an element of being deeply iconic. Is this as good as say, Fateful Findings, which is my personal favorite cluster from Neil Breen? No, but it does exist up there for a reason. <laughs> so there it is. There you have it. These are my current picks for where Bad Movies and Beat uh, lies in regards to the, the the latest 60 bad movies I've talked about. Anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, Bubba with Jar Kenny JD. If you have other bad movies I should watch or any bad movies that you think should be on any part of this list, feel free to send those over in the comment section. Send them over on Twitter, on the Discord, which I forgot to plug last week, right? Send it on the Discord. I will see you guys next time.